We're live here at Mangala Boxing Stadium for Thailand Fighting Championship. Are we live? Are we actually live? All right, cool. All right, put the camera on the ring and I'll try and figure out who the fuck is fighting. All right, first match of the night is Muay Thai, Thailand versus Thailand. We got Weiro Pong in the red and Superjaw in the blue. 120 pounds? That's like not a full-size human. We've got an amazing card tonight. I believe we have three MMA fights, four Muay Thai, one Western boxing. Kicking it off with these two badasses in a steamy evening here at Bangla Boxing Stadium. Starting to fill in. I don't know. I don't know, my line producer here is asking me how many minute rounds we have, and I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out together. It's an adventure. It's like the never-ending story. It's good to be back. Shout out to the crew putting this all together. Shout out to Will Choke. We just rocked the house with the Thai National Anthem. A little white crew action. Now we got the frying pans out of the corners. We are ready to go. All right, art of eight limbs. Thailand, national sport, Muay Thai, let's do this. Again, we got Weirapong in the red, Superjaw in the blue. I don't know who's fighting out of what camp because I cannot read Thai. Oh, it's a beautiful camera angle we've got this evening. Classic uh, rhythmic feeling out here we got going on. But again, we've got an exciting card for you tonight. Mixed discipline, some of the best camps in the area, as always. All right, they're going to have to start fighting soon. I'm going to need to see a little action here. They're like really good at this. Okay. Yeah, ref ain't having it. Thai refs are the absolute greatest. They don't put up with non-action. But they also will put their own safety at risk to save a falling KO'd opponent's head from hitting the canvas. They really are superior to Western referees. It's like not even close. Oh, beautiful leg kick. We're into the clinch now. 
That's a quick breakup of the clinch, but that was pretty tight. There wasn't going to be a lot of action there, but that could be indicative of what's to come for the evening if the ref doesn't want to let these guys clinch for more than a second or two. The early rounds tend to not be the major scoring rounds in a Muay Thai fight. It really starts to shift as we get into the later rounds. The later rounds really do establish who's the winner in a lot of these fights if there's not a knockout. Again, good to see these stadiums starting to fill back up. I mean, it is still a bit of the rainy season over here, but the tourists are returning in droves, and that's wonderful to see. This is some of the best live entertainment you can find on the planet. A little slip there, nothing major. Okay, so what do we, what do we have there? A three-minute round? That was a ballpark of three minutes. We're having roughly three minute rounds this evening. Not a ton of action there in the first, but we shall see. Okay, who do we got in the corner here? Let's see if I can figure out the camps, because they're not on my shirt, but they're not on my sheet. Let me see if I can see who's in the corner. Nah, I can't read that far. There are some celebrity faces in the crowd. Loma Look Boon Me is here. She's top five in her division with UFC. So. I still hold out hope that uh, Loma can reach the mountaintop in the UFC. She's got kicks like nobody's business. Doesn't seem like she cuts a lot of weight though. That could be a, an issue. So many fighters, like it's like an uphill battle for the Asians getting into the UFC. They don't cut a lot of weight. All right, this card is just jumping off. Let's go, we're getting into round two coming up here. Got, I think we're fighting at about 120 pounds. Thai versus Thai. Next fight up is England versus Thailand. And then after that, we have Western boxing. Good little crowd for TFC's, what, like third? I'm not sure how many events they've had here, but it's still like a new upstart company. Here we go, round two. Should seemingly, yeah, you're getting right into the action. Solid calf kick there from Super John. I really don't know how the TIE fighters get their name. There's a guy on the card named Super Beer. I'd, I'd prefer that moniker to Super Job, but they're both pretty rad. Pretty even fight so far, not a ton of action. Ref looks like he's getting fucking pissed. He's gonna talk to him, I guarantee. If the action doesn't pick up, the ref's gonna stop him and give him a lecture. There we go, aiming at the dome. It's good to see. Superjaw does appear to be the aggressor here. He looks like he hasn't seen anything that scares him too much. Right into the clinch. Okay, we got some action this time. Ref's gonna let him go. There we go. That's fair, I like this ref's kind of opinion on the clinch. They're locked up too tight, break them up. We will have some sort of belt on the line later this evening. I have no idea who the sanctioning body is or what the title is, but I've seen the belt. Boy! Beautiful kick to the face from Superjaw. He's got a gnarly clinch, too. He ain't fucking around. Sweet little mustache. Dude's awesome. Weirpong's gonna have to... Oh! Kick straight to the back. I'm, I'm honestly not clear on the rules about kicking in the back, elbowing in the spine. I think they're kind of like frowned upon, but not illegal. But I could be entirely wrong. I'm, I'm not an expert. 
I'm gonna make a prediction now because I'm always wrong. I'm gonna go with Super Jaw. He just seems like the more badass dude. So Super Jaw in the blue. Does yeah, yeah. Queer Punk's gonna have to give him a reason to be afraid of him because he hasn't yet. He's yet to land a significant strike. It appears. That second round definitely starting to get the crowd going here. Probably do in five three minute rounds. I'd imagine, but I mean, we're pretty casual about shit over here, so. Hold on, I gotta grab my beer. I'm gonna need more beers, I need, I need an assistant. Do we have an assistant for me? Chris Carlo, get me more beers. No, keep filming. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Fucking beautiful evening here in Phuket, Thailand. You really should go there. Uh, quick look at Jojo Immortals texting his girlfriend. I'll tell him to get out. Yeah, but make sure, make sure she's cool with it. Okay. Yes. Then try and get the camera crew to get you a shot of Loma, absolute Thai legend. It's kind of like the first monkey in space. Definitely the first significant TIE fighter in the UFC. I don't know if she's like maybe the first. She kicks fucking ass. I'm a huge fan. I'm gonna stay away from her so I don't bother her. Cindy, yeah. what's up? Shout out Cindy Muay Thai in the house. Good to see you, Bob. Hey, see you, brother. Uh, it's so wonderful to see all the same camps coming out. Sometimes you're fighting right down the street. Sometimes you got to make a little bit of a hike. It's, this community is awesome and has co really come together with the restrictions coming out of COVID, trying to put this all back together, pooling resources. All right, round three. Definitely expect some action here. Don't feel you got to put It's easier to talk shit over. There we go. Yeah. I don't know how old these guys are. It's not on my sheet either, but Weird Punk's hair is kind of thinning. I feel like for a number of reasons. Oh, that's a great camera angle. Right? Sweet mustache. This dude fucking knows what time it is. Uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Referee ain't having it. We didn't come here to watch you guys just fucking dance around. Throw the leather. Yeah. We got some action. Not really seeing a lot of elbows, but they are both fairly comfortable fighting at a distance. Oh, yeah. angry clinch action. Crowd's loving it. I should be a Thai referee. I'm like really good at like inciting violence. I'd be like, he said some shit about your mother. Get him. <laughs> Having a PA issue. Either the guy's beatboxing or there's a bit of an issue with the PA here in the stadium. Right? Should be of no effect to y'all tuning in live from around the world. Yeah, ref's fucking pissed. Let's go! Sorry. It's so funny how much we demand of the first fight of the evening. <laughs> this is normally just kind of like people still filling into the stadium, but we need action. All right. Oh, a little after the bell extracurricular bullshit going on from Super Job. All right, you'll notice it's typical is the dousing of the fighters with cold water. That's why they bring in those big frying pan, like walk, walk looking bullshit in the corner. It really is like a water polo match sometimes. Okay, a little replay. Oh, we got whiffing upstairs. Beautiful counter from Superjaw, bringing the left to the face. Boom. 
job by we're upon catching that. What an amazing sport we have here in Thailand. All right, what's like the British national sport? Like cricket or some bullshit? Garbage. If you've never been to Thailand or Phuket specifically, you should come here. I don't know how many other island paradises specialize in people kicking each other in the face, but this is one of them. It's remarkable. What'd it do, Chris Carlo? Shout out to the crew. This is a real ragtag group of miscreants puts on these type shows. They're fucking good at what they do. I'm the exception, obviously. They allow me to kind of sit here and talk all kinds of shit. Best attempts to entertain you at home. One last little stretch of Rooney. Man, my goddamn taint would rip in half if I tried any of this shit. Good on you, Weir Pong. Cause I'm pretty sure that dude's like 40. Or he's just losing his hair. He's losing the mustache game, he's losing the hair game, and he might be losing this fight. Here we go. Oh. Good left kick to the gut from Superjaw again. He's got that, oh, boy, right in the back. Ref broke that up quick. Probably because we are in round four here. I think the ref broke that up because we had an arm outside of the ropes, kind of tangled up. Boy, unbelievable. Beautiful strikes to the gut from Superjaw. Yeah, those are adding up. He's found a sweet spot, and he's hitting it over and over again. That odd clinch tactic from Superjaw, though. He, like, leaves, like, both of his feet. Yeah, Superjaw is really starting to pull away here on the cards. I'm not sure we're going to have much action in the fifth round. It might be one of those mercy rounds, which is it's another beautiful thing about this sport. These guys get up to 200, 300 fights sometimes. And, you know, when all hope is lost, there's usually a, uh, we kind of coast to the finish line. We'll see what happens here. If Weir Pong does in the red here, doesn't make a statement, we're probably not going to have much of a fifth round. You can, you can get yourself a beer, have some popcorn, or some bullshit. Yep, and Superjaw is still looking pretty fresh. Queer Pong is soaked. And like I said, we might have enough of just like a clear differential on scorecards at this point that we get the old sort of mercy killing. Is there a phone? Someone's asking if there's a phone here, like a pay phone or? Like a, what kind of phone? Like a phone? Like a wall phone? I don't know. You need a. Oh, are you looking? Did you lose your phone? My phone. Oh, no. Sorry, I, I apparently I'm also lost and found. I do play by play and lost and found here at Bangla Stadium. Again, Bangla Boxing Stadium, Patong, Phuket, Thailand, all places you should visit. Going into the fifth and final round here, I'd like to say confidently that Superjaw is pretty far ahead on the judges' scorecards, but it's combat sports. You know, corruption, madness, you never know what's gonna happen. All right, got more people funneling in here, wonderful. All walks of life at Bangla Stadium, from, from white people to other people, locals, Hot chicks. Yeah, you really should come here. This is awesome. It's a great show. I do believe we have a large British contingent here scouting for a popular TV show that will remain unnamed here this evening. But if negotiations go well, they could be filming an upcoming episode here at Bangla Stadium. So you definitely probably want to stay in the mix in case you want to end up in the background of a 
popular TV show. I mean, British popular, not like re regular popular, British popular. All right. Coach here trying to give a pep talk to Weirapong. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you're really going to have to... Ernest is way too distracting. He's trying to give yeah. some earnest advice. But... Yeah, I mean, like, Coconut Pete in there with his fucking Hawaiian shirt and his jean shorts. I'm just saying, if I was in there and I needed some, like, virgin advice, yeah. I would get lost in that shirt. Yeah, that's a really busy shirt to be wearing in a corner. You really got to think about what they wore in the corner. That's an excellent point. I never would have thought of that. It's an amazing point right now. It can't be a great shirt like yours. It just inspires Ryan. Hey, everybody. My cornerman wore that. Welcome to the world's most offensive broadcast. Brought to you by yours truly. Back to the action, bitch. Let's do this. Shout out to all the actual murderers in the crowd tonight. All right, round five again. Oh, forgot again. All right, we're back. But you forgot to put the timer up. Yeah. So that timer you see on your screen at home is probably like close. It's like it's close. Yeah, we just uh, we all just got back. We're not in this time zone yet. You're lucky we have any idea what day it is. Shout out to America. Get your shit together. All right, teep to the gut. Putting Weirapong on his ass. Last thing he needs right now, though. Man, Will Chope is the hardest working man in the fight business. If it's not for his, like, fucking 200 fights in every discipline, how hard he's working tonight to get everything together for this car. He missed, he's basically missed his whole fight because he's still helping guys get where they need to be. Dude's awesome. Yeah, shout out to all the people behind the scenes who put this shit together. The folks from Hawaii Boxing Stadium, the folks from Bangla, Chope and his crew. My crew of shitheads. Yes, definitely. The the belt. The, the belt that's on the line. I've seen it. It's it's got frills, it's satiny, it's gold. So it's exactly what you expect. Great great fight to open the card. Good shit. Good to be back. Great show of sportsmanship. Welcome to Thailand Fighting Championship, everybody. Blue Corner takes it handily. Super job. Fighting out of, I don't know what gym. I normally do. Vampin? Oh, we're going to we're gonna take a quick little break here in between fights. Back for another Muay Thai banger. England versus Thailand. Don't go anywhere. That could be fight of the night. There are no losers in this dojo. Creators of Full Metal Dojo, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle Kingdom come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punch. Oh, yeah! All in the one epic series known as The Most Dangerous Game Show. Oh shit, 
we're back already. Great, super professional. I'm not smoking. I'm not smoking. I'm definitely not smoking. We're here. This is a professional athletic event. That would be ridiculous. But, I mean, thanks for coming out, regardless. All right, who we got? Okay. Okay. I have, like, hilarious misspellings, I'm sure, on my card. Arthur from England. I'm guessing that's Arthur. So, Arthur from England in the red versus Kai Jeng from, uh, from Thailand in the blue. I believe, I believe we're fighting at 115 pounds, but it's so rare that I have pounds on my sheet. That's mental. How old they are? I don't know. How am I supposed to know how old they are? I can't. There's, like, nothing on my sheet. But, yes, they look like children. There's a, there's a children fight. He does have kind of a sweet mustache. Little, my first mustache, kind of Fisher Price mustache. Oi! Fuck yeah! See, this is what's great about it. The, the less experience, the more violence. You really can't go wrong. All right, again. British Arthur in the red. There's Tai Kai Jeng in the blue. Fight number two, Thailand Fighter Champion. Great mean mugs on both of these small children. I don't know, they're probably like 21. I'm just being a dick. They could be doing homework right now. They could be yeah. playing Fortnite. Yeah, for real. Instead. Yeah, for real. These jerk offs could be at home doing TikTok dances, but no! They're here being real men. Take note, America. Yes! Nice trip. It's basically legal. You can kind of tackle it. It's got to be a kind of a judo trip. And again, it's universal that the less experience, the more violence. There's no feeling out. They're still convinced they can knock everybody out at this stage in their careers and their lives. Just like I was. Oi! Beautiful kick to the dome from Arthur. Crowd goes fucking nuts. man just kicks some ass with the place on fire. And what a great way to start this card. And an amazing show of sportsmanship, checking to make sure his opponent's okay. Yep. Great showing, Artem. He did. He caught, caught him clean on the jaw. And then, oh, he did not miss on the follow-up. All right, we are going to take another quick break as we tend to our downed fighter. Don't go anywhere. Come back with more action. Western boxing coming up. That could be fight of the night. There are no losers in this dojo. I need to get sun. I'm in the middle of a cafeteria. Well, I need to fucking... I need to have creative control. <laughs> the most dangerous so, From the creators of Full Metal Doja, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle King, come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punch. All in the one epic series known as The Most Dangerous Game Show. the mic's live so it's classic us i'm pretty sure i'm i'm live but we're at commercial i don't know why what are you gonna do what are you gonna, what are you gonna do <laughs> I, am i not speaking english yeah we're in commercial uh, now we're i think we're back we're back now we're dead no i think we're back it's live again it's live we're, we're 
What are we doing? I don't know. Classic clusterfuck. God damn it. That could be fight of the night. There are no losers in this dojo. for Western Boxing with the big boys. I got American Brian in the red versus Ty Petch, Petchwira in the blue. Yeah, I think that's Brian. I'm going to call him Brian Hemsworth. It's kind of like poor man's Thor. God, if that's the poor man's Thor, what the fuck am I? <laughs> All right, big boys. Yeah, again. I'm telling you, there's, uh, the, all the weights on my card are so wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, overhands. I don't know what's happening. I'm getting tank low energy. This feels like a uh, bucket list. Like, he's like, I want to have one fight. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is gonna be funny and awkward and weird. I'm not sure Brian, I mean, Brian Hemsworth here is, you know, he's in phenomenal shape, but I'm not sure he's gonna make it out of the ring alive tonight. Big boy over there, don't give a fuck. Petch Weera. Oi. I'm not sure, this, this one's not going to the judges. Someone is going down, I'm pretty sure. All right, what do we call this? It's almost like boxing. You gotta appreciate that smoker's card there, right? Yeah, it's similar to boxing, but different. Oh, nice little overhand there. There's some very odd mannerisms from Brian, I'm not gonna lie. I really don't know what's going through his head other than like, I shouldn't have done this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even the little alien inside is just like, no, this was a bad idea. Oh, caught him running a temple with that one though. Don't sleep on Crazy Brian. Yeah, I know, right? This is like Tangmo's son. It's Tangmo's illegitimate son. He is a bit of a Lothario, from what I'm told. He's probably got kids all over time. Yeah! All right, I'm not gonna lie. Everything about this fight is a bad idea. Like it's just, it's just, someone's gonna get clunked. And I'm not sure what the backgrounds are of either of these fighters. I mean, Petchwira is like, he's like a little bit more refined and Brian is just a fucking wild animal. Who's in Brian's corner here? It's just like another random dude. This guy with the scally cap. I don't know, honestly, I don't know. It's like they're fixing his hair. He's got bigger problems. He's gonna have bigger problems, like, this guy's Instagram following is just gonna fucking disappear after he gets flattened by Petchwira here in round two, but. Yeah, yes, exactly. This is basically why I talk shit, because you never know what's gonna happen, Brandon. I'm, almost everyone in our business could beat the piss out of me, but I really don't take that into account. I just talk, I just talk all kinds of yang because you never know. Shout out to everybody who hasn't hit me in the face. That's a, it's a shrinking group of people. Yeah, yeah, that is a very good point. 
talking to my producer Brandon over here. This is an amazing point. Like, yeah, basically, I don't care who you are. There is a bodybuilder out there that you could beat the absolute piss out of. And like, I don't mean to. I'm not slighting Brian. Look at this guy. Poor man's Anthony Bourdain in the crowd. I wish you could see this guy. It's amazing. He looks exactly like. I think there's an Anthony Bourdain impersonator here tonight. All right, back to the action. We got Brian Hemsworth versus fucking Petchwira in Western boxing, hence the sneakers. And this fight is a fucking mess. There's really not a lot of technical anything, but Petchwira is a cool customer. Whoa. Okay. I'm betting Brian's got a, like a really pretty girlfriend in the crowd that's not impressed. Oh shit! Oh! Oh shit. Yeah, see the mannerisms of Brian are so strange. I can't figure out what's happening. I'm guessing he's had three boxing lessons. And he reverts to his training. It looks so odd. But honestly, good for you, dude. You're fucking rad. I've never been in there. I'm way too much of a pussy to get in there and do this. Yeah. He's using this time to pretend he didn't know how to like figure this out. And like, let's be honest, I'm making fun of this guy because he's super handsome. Like, I'm just being a dick. Yeah. 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 Yep. Classic me. Tear him down to build myself up. You know what I'm saying? Oh. This is like the overhand right championships. Boom! <laughs> this is like basically they both they only want to use the nuclear option. Brian? That's what we call a slop fest, my friend. <laughs> slop fest. Will Chope in the booth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the overhand right championship. Yes, the overhand right championship indeed. <laughs> Brian Hemsworth. I feel like Brian Hemsworth is hemorrhaging Instagram fans right now. Like this is not, this isn't going as well as he thought. Yeah. I, I bet he's got a smoking hot girlfriend in the crowd who's kind of like not impressed. Yo, and she's like, all these muscles, <laughs> but they're useless. <laughs> Big man's throwing bombs. He's rocked him a couple times already. I might as well date Luke Welling. Let's face it. <laughs> Yo, I Good love to see these, you, dude. Yeah, great. Working to see so you. hard to get these <laughs> events together. I've been talking you up. You finally got in the door by like <laughs> by fight two. Unbelievable. Yeah, I love these fights, though. I love these matchups. They're always the most fun to watch. Watching two technical fighters is boring. We said that already, yeah. too. Fight two with the two kind of kids. They went fucking at it. What is Arthur, it? like, is this the song rocked the, the house. Yo, it's the greatest. What do you do is just throw in sloppy hand Do you know anything about, like, let's say Brian here? Do you know this guy? No, not at all. I, so they put the, the, the Muay, Muay Thai. The Muay Thai, the boxing, the Thai promoters organized, but the MMA... We organize. TFC organizes. But, it, uh, it's awesome to see everybody come together to pull this off. Like I saw Peacock Cup from Rawai Stadium. Yeah. So it's like really like sharing resources to get these shows together. It's a good, fu it's a good fucking crowd yeah. too. Yeah. Brian the fuck Tang Mo. Yo, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few matches I want to give Tang Mo. How about like this guy and Brian versus Tang Mo? <laughs> Two versus one boxing. Ah, Peacock Cup the legend. The man, the myth, the legend. Be good. All right, I'm swinging out. I gotta yeah. announce the I'll MMA be, fights. I'll be here talking shit. I'll be. I'll come back and forth some time. Yeah, Keep doing what you're doing, champ. <laughs> Just to talk shit. I'm, I'm pretty sure Will Chope is a robot. He's had like 150 fights, boxing, MMA, bare knuckle, fucking everything. I'm pretty sure he's like the, the Terminator prototype. But like, obviously, there's a lot of kinks they gotta work out. You he know what I'm saying? CTE. He gets sharper and like more. That's ambitious. insane. He really does. He has reverse CTE. <laughs> Dude, every time, every time Will Chope shows up, he's more like eloquent and charming and shit. That man is a fucking legend. He's gonna be Iron Man by the end of his career. I'm gonna give him shit. He's got the braids, like a white girl on vacation, but he's looking good. He pulls it off. I would look. I. I Let's face it, y'all you know, make fun of me. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> good to see you, brother. Ah, oh, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me, Thailand. There's not a lot of countries that want me. Let's face it. <laughs> I'm usually like, hey, let's put on this crazy fight show. Thailand's like, yeah. Every other country's like, you gotta get the. Country that hasn't rejected me. Yeah. I'm invited into very few countries. 
Okay. I, again, my predictions that suck. These guys might be going to the judges. We're in round three here. Oh, where's my ship? I need my car. Okay. Petch, Petchwira and Brian Hemsworth. Oh, that was a nice straight right from Brian. Exactly. The overhand madness has been whiffing a lot. Come down, come right on down Main Street, bro. Nobody's moving. That is a, ah, yeah, he. I'm telling you, he looks off to the side after significant blows. I just want handsome people to lose, so don't take it personally. No, this is what happens when it's not second nature. You, you know, you like you haven't been doing this your whole life, so you're like your brain stops for a second to think about where you're supposed to be. Oh. Yeah. I'd love to see Petuera's record because I bet he's had like 75 Muay Thai fights and like four Western boxing. And they were like, you want to do this? And he was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Ties are the best. You, you find a lot of these like local stadium staples. These guys fight a couple times a month. All right. I feel like we need some, we need some aggressive chance. We need people to get them going. Come on, scoot. They're probably only going three rounds, I bet. I bet they're only going three. And again, people come and do bucket list stuff here. Train at a gym for a month to have one fight to just say they did it. You got to admire that. As much as I clown everybody, you, thank you. you really got to admire somebody who's like thousands of miles from home just decides to have a fight. Okay, I think that's it. We went three rounds. Okay. Uh, our timers are completely wrong. Yeah. Those were three, I don't know, one minute, 92 minute. I don't know. All right. We calling a draw here? What are we doing? That'd be a draw. Yeah! That's perfect. I am one for one on predictions. Or like one for three. Yeah, you're actually, you're actually getting your predictions. Right? It's kind of ruining my gimmick. I curse everybody. I'm like... All right, we're going to take a quick little break ski. Don't go anywhere. We are coming back with, I think, MMA action. Oh, no, we got one Muay Thai fight, then an MMA. Let's do this. That could be fight of the night. There are no losers in this dojo. Creators of Full Metal Dojo, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle Kingdom come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punching. Oh, oh, yeah! All into one epic series known as The Most Dangerous Game Show. sucks a pandemic but you want to know what sucks more what sucks more is being a father in your 40s and you're fat and you've got diabetes, diabetes. and you're, you're ridiculously out of shape and then 
your daughter gets taken by Albanians. On a trip to France, she is literally stolen and thrown into human trafficking as a sex slave. And, and you can't do anything about it because you're not Liam Neeson. No, you're not. You're fat and on the couch and you can't do crap. And your, your daughter is just being pimped out right and left and center to different men from, you know, Kuwait and Bahrain and all these different places. Maybe she's sent off to Pakistan and, you know. Back live with the fourth fight of the evening. We got Muay Thai. We got Aaron in the red from England. There's Luke Chung from Thai in the blue corner. My trusty line producer found me an ashtray, so I am back, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck yeah. Okay. Okay, again, Aaron versus Luke Chang. I think you can figure out which guy is Aaron. And boy, he does not get in the sun much, but it is the rainy season. I'm not going to give him too much shit. And again, I think we've got, like, not a tremendous amount of experience here, but they both look like they know what they're doing. Aaron is a big motherfucker. And just expect a little more action from the guys with less than 200 fights. Guy next to me is fucking humongous. Holy shit, his girlfriend's super hot. Again, uh, you really want to come here for so many reasons. It's a great place to meet people, smoking hot chicks all over the place. Guys are a bunch of steakheads, so I mean, Thailand, you can be yourself here. That's my new expression. Yeah. Hello. What up, doctor? How you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. Always a pleasure. Okay. I wonder if we have, you know, Bobby's got a height discrepancy. I wonder what they weighed in at. Ah, homeboy's got some big legs. Okay. I'm buying that these guys are the same weight class. Every now and then they'll kind of stretch. Stretch what's appropriate for weight classes. If we want to have entertaining nights. Ring card girls are in front of me and I think we're gonna get we're gonna get some ring card girl action by the MMA fight, so you definitely wanna stay tuned for a whole bunch of reasons. Okay. Decent round one here. This Aaron dude's got a hell of a frame for this sport. He's a big, tall motherfucker. Okay, Phuket Singa. Phuket Singa Muay Thai for Aaron. Great gym. Always involved in all these local events. You don't get these events without these amazing local gyms. Thank you. Thank you for that, Brandon. Uh, and I cannot quite see the corner of the Thai dude. So I don't know what gym it is. I'm gonna have to get on top of these guys for the next event to get me some more details. This is super unprofessional. And, uh, and if, you, if anybody knows anything about me, I put the ism in professionalism. All right, we are entering round two coming up here. And the next fight essentially kicks off TFC, Thailand Fighting Championship. We're going round two of fight number four. And then we got two MMA in a row. And in the second of our MMA fights coming up is local absolute legend, Petzilla. Again, our ring counters are tuned for the MMA fight. They do not represent the round length so if you're confused as to what, how long the rounds are, so are we. Yeah, yeah, we're doing our best to put a timer on the screen, but it could be way off. Okay. Okay. Aaron is pretty difficult with the ranginess. It's like a praying mantis. Right, he's got a slightly awkward style, but he is fucking his opponent up right now. I'm, I'm 
guessing unlike me, Aaron probably doesn't drink. Like, that guy's fucking ripped. Boy. Ty Ref jumping in there, calling it, catching the head. Amazing performance there by Aaron. And I'm pretty sure his opponent just realized, like, this wasn't going to be a fun night. Great show of sportsmanship. Sportsmanship, the cornerstone of sports or something. John usually says that. Shout out to John Nutt. Wish you were here, broski. John Nutt is in America right now. So if you're in America, you probably feel the vibes. And I'm sorry, he's going to be leaving soon. You're going to be back to being shitty. Hell of a knockout there from Aaron. Absolute throttling, lopsided domination from the white man. We are going to take a quick break and come back with Thailand Fighting Championship. MMA coming up next. Do not go anywhere. There are no losers in this dojo. Jumping back into it. Chokes in the ring. He's got a fucking microphone. Let's do this. Thailand Fighting Championship. yesterday at the weigh-ins at the Jungle Viewpoint in Phuket. Talk about another place you should go. It's probably the most beautiful restaurant I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen some shit. I'm like, I'm well-traveled. I do dope shit all the time. All right, back to the fight. Here we go. All right, we are now down to the MMA gloves, MMA action, Indonesia versus Thailand. Indonesia in the red, uh, no, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be real difficult. I'm saying the Thai dude's taller. I'm guessing the Indonesian guys in the... Yeah, they basically have the same gear on. It's like black shorts, red gloves, FMD gloves, full metal dojo gloves, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about partnerships, making it happen on the scene here. Feeling out action. Both of these dudes super confident. Really comfortable coming into this fight. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. Stating clearly Ooh. very curious. Yep. Waiting with bated breath. Bated Why? breath. It's, yeah, it's pretty eloquent. Some concentration. 
Yeah, it's great, like, introducing some stuff that's a little sort of non-typical for these venues. I mean, this isn't, this isn't the bullshit we do where it's foot in a tire or two guys versus two guys and shit, but they don't see MMA in these stadiums. Oi! Wow. A lot of aggression here. Both guys landing overhand rights. Yeah, this is going to be interesting for dudes who probably have, you know, relative Muay Thai kickboxing back. Whoa, nice takedown. We are not bring Oh, unbelievable reversal from the Indonesian. Oh, he's got the mount. Yeah, full mount. Trying to create some separation. Actually pulling the fighter up towards him, and he probably should be... Oh, wow, are we... Oh, my goodness! We've got a triangle attempt here. He's... Oh, real... Oh, he's got that locked in. Oh, my goodness! Holy shit, that was impressive. What a performance from the kid. OG fight wearer in his corner. Wow. That was impressive. That kid's welcome back in the dojo anytime. Damn, showed a little bit of everything. His striking was on point. He, he, got, took, he got taken down, reversed the position, got this, look at this triangle. He, like, he forgot what he was doing for a second and still locked it in. Wow. Arched the back, got the tap real quick. That was an impressive performance. We got to get this kid in full metal dojo. Beautiful. Yeah, his opponent is definitely a little worse for the wear. Caught some good blows. That was a, you know, kid really knew what he was doing on the ground. Okay, we're going to take another quick break, come back with more MMA Thailand Fighting Championship. Do not go anywhere. There are no losers in this dojo! Creators of Full Metal Dojo, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle Kingdom come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punching. Oh, oh, yeah! All into one epic series known as The Most Dangerous Game Show. more what sucks more is being a father in your 40s and you're fat and you've got diabetes, diabetes and you're you're ridiculously out of shape and then your daughter gets taken by albanians on a trip to france she is literally stolen and thrown into human trafficking as a sex slave and and you can't do anything about it because you're not liam neeson no you're not you're fat and on the couch and you can't do crap and you're your daughter's just being pimped out right and left and center to different men. It's like, kind of like, you know, three. <laughs> I don't care. Look like I can.
Lanka versus Thailand. Sri Lanka versus Thailand. Thailand is the sort of chubby, wonderful human that is Petzilla. Who is currently undefeated in MMA. Oh, shit. Right. I did not know. He's also, I believe, undefeated in Upstairs, Downstairs. He fought a fight where he could only punch and his opponent could only kick. That was like an amazing rivalry. Long story, but you want to find that fight. World's Most Dangerous Game Show. Google it. Okay. But Petzilla has had like 200, 300 Muay Thai fights, a handful of MMA fights, and I'm told he's undefeated. It's hard to corroborate here because this is madness, but I'll go with it. Undefeated Petzilla versus uh, some dude. I've met Simon. Sri Lankan Simon. I'm betting his name's not actually Simon. But yeah, we've got Simon in the red, Petzilla in the blue. That's impossible. Petzilla's the chubby guy. He looks Simon. great. His name is Srimal. Srimal. But Simon? Okay. Yeah, they're always wrong. Srimal Rodrigo. I can't speak fucking Thai, so I'm not going to give them shit for messing up these names. But he is out there in his underwear. I'll give him shit for that. Best you here. Oh, yeah. Climb on in here, buddy. That's shit. You can just hop in the booth. <laughs> um, Petzilla is a fucking brick wall. He's actually come in better shape. Than I was going to say, that's exactly what I was going to say, dude. He has, like, sort of slimmed down, but, I mean, like, the dude is fucking tough as shit. Oh, amazing. Oh! Shrimon trying to take him down. Petzilla right back to his feet. Yeah, good luck hip tossing. Y hits, yeah. Uh, He's been in this clinch before, but, you know, like... The center of gravity is at his ankle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not made of the same shit the rest of us are made of. Man after my own heart. Ooh, we've got legendary MMA journalist John Hyun Ko in the house. In my oh, hell of a trip takedown by Petzilla. And we've got the classic sort of JMMA problem of fighting MMA in a ring. And this ref just stood him up. All right, ref. That, that's not what you're supposed to... <laughs> but I'm not going to... I'm not going to criticize the man in the scally cap. I believe that was the criticism of the last TFC. I like the scally cap. It's that's when you know you're, you're taking it seriously. Oh, great clinch action. Elbow up the middle from Petzilla. He's, he's not unfamiliar with MMA. Great job by the ref here. There you go. He's basically doing the entire job that, like, Pride would do. Trying to push him back in the ring. Okay, and uh, you know, we're not gonna get a typical like breaking up of the clinch after three or five seconds here. Just gonna let him go because we are fighting MMA. Oh, uh, that, that knee looked a little. Uh, These fights are going slightly longer than three rounds. Three minutes? Three, three minutes. God damn it. My producer's drunk. I mean, I'm drunk, but I'm surprised he is too. That's unprofessional. Can only be one clown here. All right, ref's talking to them both. Oh, hands off the ropes. See, that's why I'm, I actually prefer the ropes because the cage has too many holes in it. And they're always like, as soon as the guy's falling down and he accidentally grabs the cage, you get like deducted a point. That's just madness. It's a recipe for disaster. I prefer the ring for MMA. Sight lines are better. All right, okay. Breaking them up for lack of action, fair enough. Good job, ref. I'm just yelling for the crowd. I mean, they're unfamiliar with the sport a lot of the time. This is a fucking awesome fight, actually, you know? This is like a real fight. <laughs> yeah, this is like a bar fight. These guys look pissed. Petzilla with the elbow behind the ear. That's no problem. That's what's going to be complicated about this, you know, like, Thai Muay Thai rules and then switch to MMA. Again, I'm pretty sure in like Muay Thai. Oh, fucking hell of a trip again from Petzilla. He's got almost a crucifix. This is a fucking dangerous mount. Dude, home. Okay, he got the arm out of there. He's l lucky they're not in the middle of the ring. A lot of man on top of the Yeah, and Petzilla definitely knows how to land an elbow right into your face. The nicest guy ever. You will see him around town a million times if you live in Phuket, and he is a wonderful individual, but he fucks people up. And this guy could be in for a world of hurt. Again, he's lucky he's up against the ropes. Petzilla is slowly working his arms free, posturing up. This could be trouble. Oh! Yeah. 
You're going to start to hear the crowd come alive if Pat Silly starts catching some clean elbows for, oh -ho. Five minute rounds, clearly. Five minute rounds or something, or something of that nature. Hell, hell yeah, Chopey. Another amazing event put on by Will Chope and the crew. Yeah, where's our ring card girl? What round? I don't know what round it is if I don't have ring card girl. I'm gonna pretend I have no idea what day it is. Let's go. I'm really not like a whoremonger or anything, but you got one job. You literally have one job. Get in there. Show me what round it is. Ring girl. What is this? This is a travesty. I need to speak to Will Choke. Yeah, I do. Petzilla knows what he's doing. And again, that's that's a Muay Thai move. You can't land on the guy. You're going to get bounced right back up, and you got to stop it over. But you are allowed to trip in Muay Thai from the clinch. And homeboy knows what he's doing. And I'm pretty sure he caught one or two to the dick. Well, that looks good. That bread basket is filled with bricks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, this core strength is all the way It really is, like, made of brick. I mean, talk about one of the people, though, who keeps the scene together. Petzilla, uh, uh, when he's not fighting, is helping everybody match, make, find local fighters to fill out cards. The guy is an absolute legend. There's a ring girl. Okay, here we go. Round two, I finally figured it out because there's a smoking hot chick. That's what I need. Hey, girl. All right, I like how we are taking a little bit of extra time to let homegirl show us what, what round it is. I'm gonna wink at her. When she comes back, I'm gonna wink like an old school dirt bag. I'm not really gonna do that, everybody. I'm, just, I'm filling time. I'm, I'm vamping, it's called vamping. Who the? Oh, I was talking about the chick, but whatever, Brandon. Good, out, good outside leg kick there from, I don't know, what's his name? Shremon? Shremon. Shremon. Rodrigo. Shremon Rodrigo. You're right, that is his name. I knew that. See? This is why you shouldn't drink while you broadcast. Trade yeah, trading outside leg kicks with Petzilla is probably not going to help you much. That hard to take down. Dude, Shremon's doing great, actually, to be perfectly honest. Like, yeah. he's, it, this is a, there you go, Superman punch yeah. over the top. He's, he's searching for... He's got to find the right angles, in. you know. I don't know shit from shit, but you might want to try and... You might want to try and throw an uppercut just to, you know... The guard's kind of wide from Petzilla, but he's also, he doesn't have to defend against it. You might want to make him think about it. That's perfectly content with taking his time. Yeah, he knows what the hell he's doing. He's a stalker. Homeboy, yeah, there you go, some feints. Feints going for that single leg. He's got single leg against the rope. <coughs> Again, he has not fared well on the ground with Petzilla. Holy oh, shit. No. Yeah, you want to look out for this. Petzilla is strong as hell. Yeah. And I think we are awesome Southeast Asian rules where you can soccer kick, knee a motherfucker in the face even if his hands are down shit. You know, the good stuff. Credit to Shremal. He is, he's, he's doing the math. He's looking for an end. Yeah, I mean, really, Petchel is such a tough out. If you don't have, like, jujitsu, this is fucking, you know, he's a problem. I know Petzilla very well in gold shorts, the big guy. He's got like 200 fights. 100% Probably, yeah. He's had like 200 fights. He's a local legend. I barely know Shreemar. I know him a little bit. I just got him from Australia, and I can see through his breathing and footwork that he's a better fighter. He's had 200 plus fights. I think he's undefeated in MMA, but it's only like four or five fights. It's like when he's in a big fucking sport. Yeah, but that's why we fight. That's why the attack is so aggressive. 
Petzl is made of bricks or something. You know what I'm saying? Like he can. I don't know, it was dumber. Dumber. <laughs> it's our specialty, that's our wheelhouse. Would you like to say hello to the YouTube audience for later? We are we are recording. Oh I am. Oh shit, Petzilla's in the mount again. Again, always against the ropes where he doesn't have enough room to fucking open this dude's face up, but that guy is lucky. Are you recording this right now? Yeah, yeah. Like, Probably. Okay. <laughs> We're super unprofessional like that, and we th that's kind of like a... We think it's endearing. This is the opinion from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to train Muay Thai for three years. Really? Yeah. Uh, a very good fighter in Darwin. His dad trained me. And I tell you what he used to
<laughs> All right, we got uh, we got Aussie Steph in the booth right now. Hey. Just commentary. Cool, because this was an ugly booth until you showed up. All right, so we're not sure how many rounds we're doing. Probably three five-minute rounds. It's probably the final round. There's only three rounds. They're doing five minutes though, so it's a 15-minute fight. That's kind of lengthy. And the, yeah, that's my guess. Like. If you watch the UFC title There's fights, only three rounds. title fights will be Please five rounds, but most of them do three. Yeah. There you go. Petula with a shot to the gut after eating one overhand to the head. It's actually, I mean, I'm saying Petula is dominating on the cards. If we go to the, if, if this goes to the end, how far are we into this round? I've been distracted. Just put a minute. Okay. Yeah, I mean, again, Petula with his like pedigree of 200 plus fights. This is a job for him. So sometimes, like, he thinks he's got it in the bag. If his opponent's not really going to push him, he doesn't need to look for the finish. He's probably fighting next week. Dude's an animal. But old mate's just not competition. Yeah, that's fair. And it's been a, that's, a, that's been the uphill battle over here in Thailand, you know. It's like, but you can see, though, through his footwork, uh, every time he moves, there's a reaction. We're essentially the That's guy. because he's scared. He just got put in like six headlocks, man. Yeah, we're essentially the guys who like introduced MMA over here. And it's like, it's a slow uphill climb for Thais, Cambodians, Malaysians. You know, it, it, it's, they don't have the wrestling and jujitsu background. So it's a different, He doesn't even have animal. the years on him. Like he yeah, can't. Yeah, he's Sri Lankan, I believe. Yeah, Shout out to the Sri Lankan revolution. Hello. <laughs> I feel like, are they still in the, are they still hanging out in the presidential palace or whatever the fuck? Yeah, that was wild. Cool. But like, he doesn't have the years on him to predict the play. It's a tall order to go up against a guy. Yeah. He's also up against like an absolute brick shithouse. Yeah. In Petzilla. And that's why he's bopping around shitting himself. Petzilla lets people punch him in the stomach for fun. <laughs> And he has such a low center of gravity and strong legs taking him yeah, down. Yeah, that's been the, that's been the, the real trouble for Shrimon here. Is when they get in a clinch, he's just getting fucking thrown like head over heels. Yeah, it's no, gonna happen again. He's gonna get tripped. So no. this is this is the argument that we just had: arms over legs. And I said legs because all your power comes from your legs. And I'm American, and we don't really do like soccer and shit. We like punching stuff. You just have to walk up like so five hundred stairs, and you've got legs. I fucking hurt my knee a while back too, so it's like half the problem. You and need I, a minibus. I, I hurt my knee in the. Yeah, you can't shoot a gun with your feet. <laughs> I hurt my, I hurt my knee in the dumbest possible way. How did you do never it? Heard. It was uh, it was like a jackass stunt. I let three humongous guys jump off a high dive and fucking leg drop on me. And, got on camera. And one of them, yeah, heel stomped me right in the knee twice. It was really dumb. Again, the world's most dangerous game show. Google and that shit. And you let him do it. Yeah, it was, I thought it was much funnier. So it was a skit we had planned. I'm like, it's funnier if there's a body in the pool. Yeah. And they're like, who's going to do it? And I'm like, fuck it, I'll do it. There's some funky smells up in this venue. Uh, I think it's supposed uh, to be me, to be honest. Well, yeah. put your arms down. I'm trying to keep it tight. It's like, there's all kinds of curries just mixing together. Tiger Balm and God knows what else. That's what's beautiful about Phuket, Thailand. Oh shit! Oh, he's gonna oh, give it oh a he crack. almost had the double. He's gonna give it a crack. All right. Good. I believe we made it to the final bell. Great show. Sportsmanship as always. Awesome. Kids. Awesome. What are you thinking, a draw? Maybe. No, I'm giving it to Petzilla. I'm, I'm going, that's two or three rounds. The Western boxing match was probably more of a joke and more of a bucket list thing than this fight. Yeah. Sremon might have wanted this on his record, and unfortunately, he's gonna like go against him. Like Petzilla doesn't care. That's a tall order. Well, Petzilla doesn't care. He fights to get paid and yeah. have fun. But I bet Sremon was hoping he'd get a victory here. Yeah, oh yeah. He's the, he's the Rich Franklin of uh, debut MMA fighters. They were at Malakor the other night. Shout out Malakor uh, in Rawai Phuket, fantastic restaurant. It doesn't really matter though because he's a better fighter. Yes. Fan favorite. Crowd's loving it. I mean, like, what a guy. He'll just, he's just like happy to jump on any card and do whatever the hell you want. And like, 
He's a gatekeeper. If you still love it after 400 fights, like you're... Like, but he's also a gatekeeper. If you think you're coming up and you get in, you, if you can't beat Tetzilla to MMA, sorry, you got to go back to the gym. Again, we got Steph in the booth here. On her, on, her, on her honeymoon. But I can't remember. Talking all kinds of shit. You can squat it. Nice to meet you. Absolute pleasure. Come enjoy yourself. What's this called so I can... This is going to be under Thailand Fighting Championship. We're Full Metal Dojo. Full Metal you wanna, Dojo. You want to send us off to a commercial break? Oh, here is a commercial break for Nestle. Give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Fight of the night. There are no losers in this dojo. Creators of Full Metal Dojo, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle Kingdom come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punching. Oh, oh, yeah! All into one epic series known as The Most Dangerous Game Show. sucks a pandemic but you want to know what sucks more what sucks more is being a father in your 40s and you're fat and you've got diabetes, diabetes. and you're, you're ridiculously out of shape and then your daughter gets taken by Albanians on a trip to France she is literally stolen and thrown into human trafficking as a sex slave and and you can't do anything about it because you're not Liam Neeson no, you're not. You're fat and on the couch, and you can't do crap, and your, your daughter is just being pimped out right and left and center to different men from, you know, Kuwait and Bahrain and all these different places. Maybe she's sent off to Pakistan, and, you know, you're worried about her sick, but, but you can't do anything because you're living in fear of corona. Masks on, guys. Masks on. This has been Mr. Brightside with John Nutt. The biggest fights on the planet happen in one place, and one place only, Rawai Boxing Stadium. This landed a significant blow. Oh, elbow on elbow violence. Oh, that was, that was incredible. I don't even know how to explain this. This is crazy. This is the Madison Square Garden of Thailand. It is Phuket, the pearl of the Andaman Zone. Rawai Boxing Stadium, where champions are made. Watch these warriors in action, and there will be knockouts, my friends. There will be blood, people. It's all happening here. Rawai Boxing Stadium. Rawai Boxing Stadium. Rawai Boxing We are back with the action uh, in between the MMA fights for TFC. Seems like they slipped in another Muay Thai fight. Unbeknownst to anyone, uh, Luke Welling's taking a bathroom break. 
So your designated commentator will return in a moment. Guys, we are back with an Muita. extremely low energy fight. I'm okay. not sure if they're fighting. But yeah, right. what was that all about? Oh, yeah, I forgot the, that Australian lady who snuck into the booth. Yeah, I mean, like, oh, to be a white woman. You just, like, wander in, start talking, and then be like, oh, are you, are you guys doing something? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting at a desk with a microphone and a computer and a bunch of cameras and shit. I'm obviously doing something. But she was pleasant. I wish you the best on your honeymoon. Good luck to you, buddy. All right, back to the Muay Thai action that is pretty, pretty mellow right now. Do you have the nerve to do that and not be single? Huh. Yeah, man. <laughs> man. If, I'm, if I'm on my honeymoon, I'm not, not letting a, your wife near me, to be honest. But but I, I digress. Who are, who are unaware, uh, Luke Rowling has this curse. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I get attacked by women and men on the regular. It's fucking it, insane. Yeah. <laughs> well, pretty girls and hideous men will invade his space uh, on a routine basis. I haven't been hit in the face in quite a few months, but that's because I was back in the States. I've only been back here for like... It's only because you haven't been here. Yeah, I've only been here for like seven, eight days. Give me some time. Shout out to Bang Pow Muay Thai and MMA. They've got the headliner coming up. And I mean, yeah, that was speaking of me getting hit in the face. But uh, we've got legendary coaches in the building. Both the Hickmans are here. Alex Schild is here. Loma, one of their prime pupils, is in attendance. It's like one of the best things about this. You get every, you get like the whole gamut in terms of range of quality of people having their first fights, maybe having their only fight, all the way up to people being coached by the absolute best in the game, hoping for a real future in this sport. I'm gonna go see if I can give Jojo a, uh, this is why I, I do this. I'm gonna go give Jojo water. I'll be back in 10 seconds. Jojo Immortals. If you need some great content, look up Jojo yeah. Immortals YouTube. He's one of the best photographers, videographers in the game outside of my crew of absolute maniacs. All right, this doesn't pick up. I'm just going to start ripping. Shout out to everybody who showed up tonight. White people, people with better, better melanin. The hot chicks, the big girls. It's awesome. Jerry rigged our uh, timer. So it might actually work this time. You think this is a five round? Five I, minute? I have no idea anymore. Yeah, I think you're way off. This is a Muay Thai fight. This is an MMA. We're, we're back. We are back to the sort of Muay Thai undercard. So we, what we have here is Thailand versus Thailand. Rock Surat in the red. Narong Chai in the blue. I'll see if I can't pick. Nope, again. So, blue corner has got the Hawaiian shirt guy again. Red corner, these guys are like nondescript shirts, like even less to go on. Yeah, ref's like, what the fuck? That's the best. Like, we came here to watch you two dickheads grease up and dance around. No! Came here for violence. Let's go! All right. 
So you change the you change the timer in mid fight. Yeah. It's awesome. We are awesome at flying by the old seat of the pants. Again, shout out to John Nutt. Big dog couldn't be here tonight. Usually live on the horn, singing the Thai national anthem, getting the crowd amped. We don't need anyone to get the crowd amped tonight. People are having a good time. And we've got two fights left. We have one MMA, and then we have our main event for the belt. Oh, that's right. We have Man, uh, the Frenchman versus Pritchett. Yeah, so the MMA fight is, yeah, that uh, Johan van der Hel is a scary motherfucker. Yep, again, they were at the weigh-ins last night at the Jungle Viewpoint in Phuket. If you've never been to the Jungle Viewpoint, you're kind of lame. All right, we're going to need more action. It is amazing how sometimes the Muay Thai fights will outshine the MMA. It almost feels like the MMA is outshining the Muay Thai tonight, which is a little bit, got, it's kind of rare for Thailand. Crowd's like, what the fuck? They want to see some tackling and some throttling. I want to see. Still got the run up right. These are two and a half minute rounds. They're two and a half minute rounds, says my uh, trusty producer. But, I don't know. I really don't. I haven't been paying attention. I don't really pay close attention to these events. Kind of glance at the periphery and talk a lot of shit. Tunes are bumping. Shout out to my crew. I got Norbert in the corner. Norbert is, we picked him up after like there was a, some sort of Civil War type coup shit show in Burma. And I don't know, I think. He's gonna be able to smuggle them out in a, in a crate full of peaches. <laughs> yeah, yes. I remember, I remember the day we cracked open the crate and there was Norbert all like emaciated and just kind of like just surrounded in fruit and apple <laughs> Yes, <laughs> so thankful. <laughs> See daylight again. Shout out to all the Burmese refugees out there. We got your back if you need a, if you, need, if you like combat sports and know how to work a camera, we got you. The most eclectic uh, production team on yeah. the planet. Yeah, honestly, it's wild. We got indigenous Filipinos. You guys are all like these slightly different shades of brown. It's wild. We got Indo-Aryans. I look like I do not belong at all. Yeah, I got yeah, I got Indo Aryans, I got pre Siamese, Burmese, and Chris Carlo is like Asian Mexican Canadian. I don't know. Like indigenous Mongolian. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how they say everyone's related to Genghis Khan. Like Chris Carlo's got the d most direct line back to Genghis Khan. And I'm just like white people just kept mating. Like, it was just like the whitest of the white. I think I'm German-Irish. But honestly, I don't know. I think I'm German-Irish, but my grandmother had like four husbands, so it's really confusing. Huh? No, nothing. I'm just looking for a lighter. Brandon, be professional. Don't, don't occur. Here we go. All right. We're getting a little kind of rowdy. Let's just point this camera that's on me at the ring girl. Can we point this camera right at the ring girls who are right there? Can I, can I just turn this around? Oh, no. Come on, you it dick. Won't, won't go. Back to the show, you fucker. I look ghastly. I look ghastly on that camera angle. I'm gonna have to talk to my guys. It's the white balance on the camera. You are quite pink. It's in so red. white. It's yeah. fucking nuts. And I've been saying it for months. A little flinch. These guys get fucking angry. This is good. Crowds don't put up with boring fights, and refs definitely don't. Fairly 
really elbow-free evening. Petzl is really the only one bringing the pain. Oh, oi! We'll try it with they the. They uh, the or the flaccid. These guys are pretty. What? Flat. It on. Flaccid? Yeah. Flat. Yeah. Flat. All right. Now they are like strong, like bull. Yes. They popped the Viagra in round it, three. It's actually a pretty good fucking matchup. They're pretty evenly matched. This round's much better. Hey, that's the dude from. Okay. What round are we in? Yeah. I don't know. How would I know? I'm the one who's drunk. The the corner man here is our winner of the first fight. It is Superjaw working the corner. What? Really? Superjaw is working the corner for Rock Surat here. Superjaw with the sweetest mustache on the card. Again, whoever's got that shirt in their corner is gonna lose. Yeah, the Hawaiian shirt and the jorts. Hawaiian shirt and jorts. I, are you are you really taking it seriously? It's not. I mean, I guess maybe it's Casual Friday here at the stadium, but I'm gonna need to hear an excuse as to why you showed up looking like that, sir. The other guy's got like a Canadian tuxedo. Check it out. Check out the other guy. The other guy's denim head to toe. I dig it. Matt, yeah, up you would. I'm assuming this is round five. That's what we're gonna win. God damn Canadians. Okay. My producer is assuming this is round five. I don't make assumptions. Make an ass of you and me and Petzilla. Or whatever the expression is. There's a big dude in the front row who has been smoking weed all night and he looks fucked up. I hope we catch him on camera. It'd be like if Andy Milanakis actually grew, it would be this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these guys are bringing the fucking pain now. Let's go. Again, we have Roxurat in the in the red and Narong Chai in the blue. Both very Thai names. It's round four. It's round four. My producer, who is entirely sober, yet again, has no idea what's going on. I feel like I'm, I'm like a captain of a plane doing these alone. I'm just like, we are flying at an altitude. Uh, if you look out your right window, you see guys fighting Muay Thai. Thank you. Okay. So I should point the microphone at my face. You should tell me these things earlier. Oh, nice body kicks. Huh? Oh, Steph. Shout out to Steph. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, you're right, though. I repositioned everything when a random woman walked into the booth. Being like, hey, what are you guys doing? the show that Stephanie ruined. As far as she was concerned, she's an expert. Hey, girl. I don't know. Another smoke show just walked into the building. I'm a little distracted, but let's get back to the action. Yeah, ref ain't having it. Let's go. These guys are really evenly matched. I want to see some fucking throttling. Stuff. They're both real comfortable in there. Tough to score. Tough to score, not a ton of defense. After this fight, we go back to TFC for our final two fights. We got one more round coming up here. Good stuff. This fight's too close to coast here, so hopefully we get some action in the fifth round. Then we're on to MMA. Then we've got a final Muay Thai fight, I believe, for some sort of belt. I'm gonna need to hear more from Will about what, what exactly his belt is. But it may be the TFC something or other champion, 155 pound champion. 
I believe that belt is on the line. And that, and uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. The next fight, one of the dudes looks like an absolute murderer, and his opponent, who's considerably shorter, gives zero fucks and looks like he is ready to throw down. Yes, and I'm told he's French, but I'm guessing French Algerian. He looks like much angrier than your typical Frenchman. I can see his jaw dropping and down here. Yeah, it's like if I didn't drink and I trained all the time and like went to gyms and had a good coach, I could look like that. But I don't want to. I mean, I want to, but I don't want to do all that work. Yeah. Come back if like, I come back as this like really angry French Algerian dude, that'd be the sickest. Yeah. Lord, if you're listening. All right. Final round. Last Muay Thai fight of the local card. And then we get on to the big TFC action to close out the show. Let's go. Oh, yeah. This one's too close to call. We need some fucking, we need someone to separate here. And again, you're going to find kicks. Kicks score more than punches here in Thailand, so probably going to be a kick-centric approach. Ah, oh, he kicked a spectator in the face. You're welcome. Oh. Blue corner with some serious action there in the clinch. This is a great matchup. No, they're like perfectly matched. They're both good. You gotta like up the purse. These guys need to be fighting like a million dollars or like for their life. And then this would be carnage. I think homeboy in the red thinks he's got it and I'm not so confident. I think it's really going to come down to who can kind of land a couple of significant kicks here in this round. Yep. Yep. You see the coaches turn into cheerleaders when it's close like this. They want the judges to know about every blow that lands. Okay. Homeboy in the blue now thinks he's got it. As you can see, he's just sort of trying to avoid anything because he apparently thinks he's created enough separation. I don't know. Okay, what a, you know, again, phenomenal sportsmanship here at Bangla Boxing Stadium. We, now nah, nah, we gotta get a decision. I need the decision. I'm not going to commercial before there's a decision. Oh, red corner takes it. Blue corner in utter dismay. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but we are coming back with the final two fights of the evening. Don't go anywhere, folks. That's the big fight of the night. There are no losers in this dojo. Creators of Full Metal Dojo, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle Kingdom come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punching. Oh, oh, yeah! All into one epic series known as The Most Dangerous Game Show. I can stay focused for two fights. Fucking final countdown. Yep. 
I talk a lot of shit, but these are two guys I do not talk shit about. They both really do kind of bring the thunder. Beautiful. Okay. All right, Will Chope. Will Chope with the professionalism, giving me the details I need. So, Pritchard fighting out of Tiger Muay Thai, one of the greatest camps ever, facing Johan, fighting out of Nova Uniao, which is now in Soi Tayed. Marcio is an absolute fucking legend, jiu-jitsu and MMA. You know, like, you couldn't have better camps in your corner. When we were at the uh, weigh-in, these guys were ready to go. Yeah, 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 totally. Again, Jungle Viewpoint, check out the weigh-ins from last night. Oh, shit. Okay. Johan's got a slightly awkward style, I'm not going to lie. Frankenstein kind of shit. He's fighting like a gremlin. It's yeah. Hold on. Dude, boy. Yeah, I, you he know. A terrifying game. We're going to have violence here. This is great. This is a great fucking matchup. And again, these are the best gyms in the world, and this is where fighters get their start. That's why it's so great to come here. You're cornered by some absolute legends. You got Tiger Muay Thai versus Nova Uniao. Those two gyms are about two minutes apart on the same street. So these guys have been eating dinner at separate tables at the same restaurant and shit for weeks, probably. It's a real good way to get some heat going. Little clinch action. Steven seems a little... Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. You know, you see a lot longer kind of grappling clinch attempts in MMA. But we're going to go with the sort of Muay Thai. You got five, ten seconds to clinch. Damn. Man, he has a terrifying mirroring presence. He's got, he's got to get that chin down. There's a, there's a chance he catches a fastball he doesn't see coming. But yes, he's a monster, dude. Again, Johan Vandehel in the red, in the red trunks. Stephen Pritchard in the black trunks. MMA debut for Pritchard. Vandehel 2-0, I believe. And again, I'm, I mean, he's fighting at a Tiger, so I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure of his whole background. So I'm not going to say anything dumber than I normally say. Yeah, it's got to be. I bet this is three five-minute rounds for everybody watching at home. And of course, we should know this type of stuff, but... Doesn't make it more exciting. We don't even know how long the fights are. Support our Patreon and you can actually afford stuff like rehearsals. Shout out to everybody who did not give me the information I need to have a professional broadcast. I love you anyway. Boy, trying to line him up. That is a yeah. There you. That's what I'm talking about. Homeboy's got to get his chin down. He is big. He is dominant. And he's scary. But he also stands pretty straight up and just sort of cranes his neck back. It's not exactly textbook defense. If you want to know what happened, uh, Ivan Drago between Rocky IV and Reed, uh, Johan's a pretty good answer. Yeah. How the fuck do you stay that in shape? I'm so jealous. Oh! Dirty pool! Oh shit, we got full mount on an amazing takedown, even after he grabbed the ropes. That was like two takedowns in one. See, this is the inexperience. You've got to create the separation. There you go, Johan. Push his head down. There's no power to be had from here. Create the separation. Posture up. Yep. Elbow to the face, elbow to the throat. It's all legal, baby. Yeah. Elbows that slice you open are the worst. Beauty. A lot of top control here from Johan. This is not like portend well. If that's the, I think that's the right word. Yeah, he's got a minute here in this position. And this just does not bode well for homeboy. What he's doing is keeping his legs off the ground by kind of like crossing his own ankles. That was re working really well. That's like Khabib shit. 
It's like there are a million little things you don't see people do that make all, uh-oh, open them up. This is a, I don't know, he's not absorbing that much damage. Maybe take a break. Maybe take a minute. If you're not getting tired, you're not absorbing that much damage, you might get out of it. Yeah, I, he didn't seem to have much in the, in the way. He's, he's still not doing much, but again, he's not he's not he's not accepting that much right now. He's just, you never know who's wasted more energy here. Okay, yeah, that's the thing about being on top, having that position. You really want to give an elbow or two a try just to see if you can get some blood flowing. I mean, it's a fucking sadistic sport, but that'll make a big difference. Your opponent's got blood running into his eyes. All right, we are waning, waning, waning moments. Here we go. Yeah, these guys are fighting at like a, a buck fifty-five. So the last two fights of the card are this one and the next one. They're both one fifty-five MMA bouts. This guy's a god of a fat ass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Two hundred five pounds. I could get down to one fifty-five. I haven't been one fifty-five since I was nine. I could get, I could if I like work real hard, but like. Well, I, there's no way I'd look like this Johan monster if I got down to 155. I gotta start taking my diet seriously. I don't know though. I might. I'd fight him. I'd fight Johan. That 155, if I can make it. If he's really 155. How much are you? You know. 170. You're more than Johan. Maybe not. I don't. I, I do. I don't even know. I haven't stepped on a scale in forever. That's true. Yeah, I'm probably like 155. <laughs> And I just can't admit it to myself. If I'm 155, I'll fight him next month. Suplex City, baby. Yeah, he's a tough dude. He's awkward as shit. Again. Uh, shout out to my boy Kaina back home who got his like uh, his professional boxing coach trainer license in America. Brazilian dude. I want to get him over here. He should just meet Marcio and be like, I'll teach your fighters how to fucking knock people in the next week. It's like a young Keith Jardine. <laughs> yeah, sure. A very spelt Randy Couture. Oh, shit. Okay, maybe I don't want to fight him. <laughs> oh, we're going for a ride. Okay. Now we're going to find out if that was playing possum or if he really just doesn't have much for Johan here on his back. But I want to see some violence. This is the move. The, like, there was an amazing shot uh, from the other week of Marcio cornering a fighter who got an arm bar. It was such a perfect coach moment. His female fighter was right in front of him, listening to his advice, arm barred her opponent, got the finish. It's one of my favorite MMA photos of all time. And it's from like a week ago, and it's on his Facebook or whatever, Instagram. It's on Nova Unia's. Oh, shit. This is going to be the end of it. You can spin out. If we're not seeing much more out of Pritchard here, we might have a finish. I mean, this goes to show, though, like, how much experience comes into play. Like, phenomenal specimen, he's dominating, but he just can't find the finish. Look at that. Unreal. Right in front of your jiu-jitsu coach. That's just... You don't see the old Hoist Gracie heel to the back, but... Johan is enormous. He could heal to the back, to the spine, like a bastard if he wanted to. Yeah, but see, it he has to start, to start getting some offense out. Yeah, Pritchard's like got like better strategy. He's trying to land that elbow. We're that. Yeah, we are approaching halfway through this, and all of a sudden, Pritchard's got top position. But again, the lanky. Frenchman. Nope, now we got side control action. Yeah, it turns out neither of these guys are great at defending from the back, but pretty decent at avoiding major blows. Yeah, ref's probably going to consider standing these guys up because of the sort of lack of real action on the ground. 
I mean, you you could let this go on. There are, you know, people are trying to advance positions, but they're both like have such a shitty track record in this fight. I mean, this is what you see at the like at the high level. The pros know the value of getting one good opportunity from this position that can change the fight. One good blow that, again, it's barbaric, but it's you can get blood streaming down your opponent's face. It is an enormous distraction going forward. It's an absolute nightmare. Drinking your own blood and having it run into your eyes. Oh, good sprawl, good scramble there. Okay. Hard to tell who's fresher here. They both look pretty good. Great matchmaking here, you know? Working with like the old Island of Lost Toys, kind of like Phuket not all the way back, rainy season, and so many even matchups this evening. We had one or two quick finishes that were fucking awesome and a lot of like really close fights. Yeah. Nice. Wait, we have a dick shot? Yeah. Good shot to the dick and balls. I love MMA rules where, like, if you so much as graze the dick and balls, you're taking a five-minute break. But you can punch a guy in the back of the head, like, three, four times, and the ref's always just like, cut that out. It's such an odd rule. The back of the head is just, like, frowned upon. <laughs> you know? They're like, no, you stop that. So many like legitimate fights have been stopped after like seven blows to the back of the head and then one to the face. They call it like a knockout. Yeah, he's he's taking a couple. Yeah, I mean we got a debut, so you're going 15 fucking minutes against absolute savage. Oof. Jesus. Homeboy throws hard. Yeah, those knees are killer. Nice elbow inside. I honestly I don't think I'm I don't think I'm going for takedowns if I'm Johan. He's got a clear advantage on the feet. He's got yeah. Oh. Wow. Fortunate end of the round there. Uh, Richard was in a very shitty position. All right, Marcio Gracinha, Nova Unia, we're in there with this fighter who's probably up on the cards, but I don't know, I got five more minutes to go here. He didn't do all that well off his own back. If I'm Johan, I'm not going to the ground anymore. I don't see any reason to go to the ground. I'm like eight inches taller than this dude. But your coach is an absolute jujitsu stud. So I feel like he's probably like, like a lot of pressure. Uh, ring card girl, otherwise we would not know what day it is. Round three coming up. Third and final round. Last round before the main event. Here we go, music still playing, but we are deep into the action. DJ went into the bathroom, I'm guessing. This is fucking awesome. There we go. Yep, I'm guessing based on this performance, Marcio told him stop going to the ground. And that is awesome. That is such a good coach. A coach whose wheelhouse is jujitsu, knowing to tell his fighter, don't. Don't go to the ground right now. You've got this guy on the feet. Why is he throwing any punches? Have you ever seen Marcio fight MMA? It's fucking savage. I mean, he's exhausted. It may, I don't know. Richard hasn't thrown a single strike yet. Yeah. Good call. Ref's gonna be all over this. Yep, no, no problem, buddy. I got, I got you. Yeah, I think we're gonna get a stoppage any minute now. And that's fair. No, I mean it's his debut. It's hot in here. It's a 15-minute fucking fight. 
You gotta live to fight another day, man. This is a job like any other. Oh, there we go. Yep, nice low kick. I, I just love that Johan is not trying to get this to the ground. This is where you, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's great. He's coming over to give him, you know, some sportsmanship, baby, yeah. Tough to tell like, how, how far Johan's going to go here. That's his third victory, 3-0 at MMA. Clearly got some stuff to work on, but holy shit, that guy's got a frame for this business. Scary looking dude. Uh, we're going to take a real quick break and come back for the main event. Belts on the line, MMA, baby. See you soon. There are no losers in this dojo. Creators of Full Metal Dojo, Fight Circus, and Bare Knuckle Kingdom come a new, elevated series, game shows, comedy, and face punching. Oh, oh, yeah! All into one epic series known as... Oh shit. We are back, we are live, we got belts on the line, Will Chope's got the mic, let's fucking do this. JJ Jones, three J's. You should get branded like a like cattle. It's the Triple J Ranch. JJ fucks people up. He may not look like the most imposing dude, but he is fucking good. Now Jasper's a last minute replacement for another Sri Lankan fighter who's Visa. Ah, okay. So the Sri Lankan Revolution fucked up the card a little bit, and we've got a late replacement, but this dude is cool as they fucking come. Jasper here looks like he is ready to fucking go. Where's Jasper? Jasper is Bangladeshi. Wow. Shout out to Bangladesh. I know very little about your country, so I don't even have jokes. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up in the encyclopedia. Uh, do people still have encyclopedias? Here we go, Choke. Yes. So, fucking main event. People aren't even out of the ring. They're fucking ringing the bell. Let's go. Again, you got JJ Jones versus Jasper. Jasper is the Bangladeshi gentleman. J.J. Jones is the guy who looks like he's never been in the sun. Oh, shit. Yeah, J.J. don't fuck around. This could be a tall order for Jasper. How many J's in the ring right now? Yeah, J.J., Jasper, Jones. Shout out John Nutt, you're not here. Holy shit. This is going to be it, folks. JJ is an animal, absolute animal, TFC champion, fighting out of Bangtao, Muay Thai and MMA. You want to become a champion, you go to Bangtao, Muay Thai and MMA. 
Imagine fighting in a local stadium like this and you have both of the Hickman brothers and Alex Shield in your corner and Loma Lukumi shows up just to watch you kick ass. It's tough. That's a, that's a tall order for Jasper, the fill-in fighter here. Good. That, the fastest finish in TFC history? that may be the fastest finish in TFC history. Unbelievable. And again, I know JJ doesn't look like the most imposing fighter, and maybe his opponent was incredibly overmatched in this situation. But JJ is one to watch. He is an absolute fucking killer. That name is going to be one you know. Well, he fought Colton Colbasa at the last TFC, so. Yeah, he fucks everybody up, dude. He's awesome. And, yeah. like, people turn out to watch him. He's got a, a, a fan base here. He's got a fan base online. The kid is awesome. He's welcome on any card around here. And, again, look who's in the ring right now. These are the best coaches in the fucking world. That's, that's Topnoy, who's on his road to the UFC. He's got one more fight to win, I think, to get to the UFC. That's smiling a sec. No, he's got one more fight. He's fighting the Korean on, the, on episode two. Well, technically, he's still on the UFC. Like, yeah, he's technically in the UFC now. Shout out to Topnoy. Absolute fucking legend. Both the Hickmans. Yeah. If you don't know the, who these people are, yeah, I don't know. Just go watch tennis. Absolute fucking legends. That's the best thing about coming over here to watch fights is the support of these gyms for these fighters getting started. You might be looking at a future champ right here. Obviously, he's TFC champ now, but sky's the limit when you got that crew working with you. Beautiful to see. And again, smiling assassin, Piak Mitzatit, absolute full metal dojo legend. Great night. What a great night here in Patong. Bangla Boxing Stadium, Rawai Boxing Stadium. Shout out to my crew. I love everybody here. Thanks for coming out. We're going to do it again sometime soon. Beautiful.